ask you a question, Caleb. Has there been one player we mentioned since preseason camp began that we didn't mention over the summer? In other words, a guy that just comes out of nowhere. Because nowadays with the coverage of individual teams, and especially Tennessee, that's difficult to do. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Particularly with the way Hypo runs everything, it becomes very difficult to do that, particularly in fall camp. You really... You don't really know much until you see them on the field, right? Agreed. Who would you say to this point in your mind has had the biggest impact in terms of the two weeks in the fall camp and improving themselves? I would have said um, Chris Brazel because, like I said, I and, and, you know, I was – it's funny because Chris Brazel stood out in the spring too, but I take everything that happens in the spring with a grain of salt. So I just thought Mike Matthews was going to win that job, that number two wideout job. I thought a healthy Dante Thornton would be a bigger threat. But Chris Brazel is apparently standing out at receiver in the spring, and that's thrown me off a lot. Yep. Um, I think that he is uh, very good. I think that Tennessee ultimately has a good problem at receiver, and that is they uh, had a lot of depth. Now, we have they have a lot of depth. We have talked a lot about the center position, and we both think that Tennessee – would have fared much better against Florida, quite possibly had won, had the Vols not had to go with a uh, backup center that – was it Dane Davis that played in front of Cooper Mays at Florida? Okay. Uh, I thought it was Ollie Lane who did it last okay, year. It was Ollie Lane. I'm sorry. Either way, they were not prepared to be without Cooper Mays. But the name you need to know, and a guy that's going to start two years, barring injury, from for Tennessee, is William Satterwhite. A uh, true freshman from Akron, Ohio, signed with the balls over Clemson as uh, and Alabama as a four-star prospect. Don't get excited about centers a lot, but listen to what Mays had and be sure and watch the ball report with Cooper Mays. That is right there on our YouTube channel. Please hit the like and subscribe button. All kinds of special things coming down the pike. He said, uh, when I asked about uh, Bison Lang, he said, quote, Bison has gotten better throughout the first little bit of camp. He's doing better. We've also got a new young guy, William Satterwhite, who's also working at the center spot. He's done a really, really good job as well, especially for being a young guy. Reminds me a lot of me, and they've been doing a good job. So the reason I wanted to read the quote is when somebody offers up a name, that means they've been very impressed. If I said and I went down the roster, what do you tell what do you think about William Satterfield? Oh, he's done great. Well, that's not exactly a ringing endorsement. What's Cooper supposed to say? Man, that guy's hot garbage. No, he's not gonna say that. So, but when he offers up a name, that to me is extremely strong. Now, do I think that William Satterwhite, if he is like Cooper, who he said reminds him of, if he's like Cooper, he needs some time to develop. So I don't think he's going to be Tennessee's number two center right now. But you know that I've had questions about Bison Lang and the fact that he wasn't ready last year when Cooper went down. If you want me to predict right now, I think by next year, let's assume Cooper Mays is 100% healthy all year. Because I think if they had to make it, if they had to sub for Cooper at this point, it might be Dane Davis or something goofy. But as of next year, I think William Satterwhite's going to be your starter. And I think Bison Lang is either going to find his home at backup center, some other school, or guard for Tennessee. I, I watched, Since I talked to Cooper, I watched a good bit of Satterwhite and Bison Lang. Satterwhite has a special spring, a fast twitch ability that is tough to replicate at center because one of your hands has to be between your legs or snapping the ball out of the shotgun. But he's at, able to to fast twitch at a different level than Bison Lang. Let's also look at their, I, I want to look at their size too, but first let me get your thoughts on offering up a William Satterwhite. Um, what did you think of uh, Cooper Mays uh, touting him as perhaps the next very good Tennessee offensive line? You know, I did consider William Satterwhite a very, very big pickup when he committed to Tennessee back in July of 2023. Interestingly enough, I, um, and then we kind of lost him, didn't we? We did, but we talked about, you know, Tennessee nailed him um, out of Ohio as a universal four-star. He was a interior offensive lineman at 6'3", 300 pounds. 
Um, they got him last July when they when they locked him up. I thought it was a huge deal. So he, w- but I thought he was a huge deal as a guy who was going to play down the road. Sounds like he could be fast tracked to play, maybe even some this year because of the questions about the offensive line rotation, which it, that really stands out. That I did not see that coming, Dave. Yeah, I think that he will play. I think he'll play some in garbage time at the very least. I don't want to project that he will play significant time because significant time you would be talking about somebody getting hurt, right? So let's right. let's look. Here's my biggest factor, and I, I don't want to be that guy, but I guess I'm going to be uh, because those that have followed my career know that I put on a pound or two, a time or two. So, but here's why I like Satterwhite. Because Satterwhite is listed at six foot three, 340 pounds, which I realize sounds extremely big. Um, Picked up 40 pounds from when he signed. I'm sorry. By the way. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm sorry. He's listed at six foot three, 300 pounds. Sorry. I, I misspoke. Oh, okay. Sorry. Bryson Lang is listed at six foot four, 340 pounds. Guys, unless there's a massive difference in muscle density. You can just do the math real quick at six foot three, 300, as opposed to six foot four, 340. Your BMI, your body mass index, and your ability, and you're, you're probably innately carrying much more muscle than fat. Bison Lang listed at six foot four, 340 pounds after he's had a year in this system. I'm sorry, that's heavy. That's, that's, that's heavy. And Satterwhite at six foot three, 300 pounds feels a lot more like a good fit. So I'm not willing to rule out that if Tennessee middle of the season needed somebody to fill in for Cooper Mays, that Satterwhite wouldn't be the guy. Caleb? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. And that's kind of shocking because playing center in this system isn't just about your body type. I mean, you, there's a lot you have to know. So if we're saying this, what we're really saying is William Satterwhite is a very smart player who picks things up very quickly. You, you brought up a really good point. So I think if if somebody runs, if something happens to Coop midseason and somebody has to run out there for a little bit and it's not sad or white, then he probably doesn't have the mental grasp, which is understandable, right? Right, exactly. I mean, he's just showed up on campus. I can't imagine... I can't imagine jesting all of this offense in just a matter of months. Uh, Hooker's Hangouts, uh, Hook's Hangouts, as a matter of fact, one is Asia Cafe. Treat yourself to authentic Asian cuisine handcrafted from guarded family recipes. Five locations to choose from, asiacafe.org, asiacafe.org. Um, Caleb, I think Bison Lang has to really look at himself this year and determine if this is something he (laughs) really wants because if he really wants it perhaps it would be a better fit for him somewhere else that relies on bigger offensive linemen instead of guys that are a little bit lighter and have better feet i i i feel like there's a chance and i don't want to dump on bison lane here but i feel like there's a chance that this was a guy that tennessee took because they had to have a dude as opposed to, hey, we really, really want this guy. Well, but I did think they were trying to make him work last year. Like, I do work too. Out at, um, and so that's where I'm a little bit thrown off on this. But, uh, you know, one of the things I will say is that um, there is – you can be big in this system and be effective. I mean, Javante Spragans is huge. He's massive and he's able to run. But it, it is tricky, so I don't know how it will work out. That I mean, I, I'm I'm totally with you on that. It is debatable, but I, I just put a lot of stock in the idea that Vice and Lane would be ready to go at this point, which totally throws me off. Um, I did too. I, I'm not saying he's not. Um, you can go back and listen to the Vol Report with Cooper Mays, brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning, and get his fill for it. I just thought it was interesting that he uh, brought up a uh, freshman. By the way, it wasn't a freshman, but it was an inexperienced center that started for Tennessee in their 1998 team when they won a national championship. You can own the book. Just click on the QR code written by moi, Celebrate 98, the untold stories behind Tennessee's 1998 national championship. It is available at offthehooksports.com, and we would greatly appreciate you checking those out as always portions of the program 
brought to you by our good friends at Ray Barner Ford. Cab for the four STX forty five nine eighty five. 24 Ford Escape, 30,962. 24 Ford Maverick XLT, 32,720. Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. So do you feel better about Tennessee's offensive line or any different based off what I gave you, this Satterwhite news? And I'll ask the message board that as well. Uh, it's kind of the Deshaun Bishop thing, i got to be honest with you. Sounds like they're using Satterwhite because they're disappointed with me and people like Bison Ling, like you mentioned, and that's going to be an issue for Tennessee long term. That's something they've really got to address. Yeah. And now, now, Travis, you said Alabama had a 400 pound nose guard, but this is different. I want my offensive lineman, especially in this system, to be able to move around. 340 ain't bad. I don't know that if you want to look up Tennessee's, I think I have them pulled up right now. Uh, Tennessee's biggest offensive line would be Lance Hurd at this point, right? And he's about 340, but he's also like six foot. I would have called Javante Spragans, but you might be right. Okay. Nevertheless, I don't think if, if you're if you're choosing and recruiting as opposed to the big mauler, um, as opposed to the guy that that has better feet and is a little bit lighter, are you airing on which side? I mean, you're going with the guy with the better feet. But I will say your interior is actually not as important with hypo system with this. That, that's where I was at. It's uh, on the interior. In Hypo's system, they still have to be conditioned well. But, I mean, again, uh, Javante Spragans has been just absolutely – how big is Javante Spragans? I just can't – I got to look that up again because Spragans is – I'm pulling it up now. Oh. I mean, he's 6'3", 330. Yeah, pretty good size. Uh, pretty good size. I, I think that uh, Tennessee is an offense that – Yes, they would like the big run maulers, but Caleb, how are they going to run the football most oftentimes? It's by the safety's afraid to get into the box, right? And you're you're right. you're worried about right. you're worried about giving up plays over the top. That's how you do it, right? Yeah. No, you're right. That's that's what you want to do, but you got to be able to move the ball running to to be able to hit those. So um but yeah, it's it's and, and the conditioning is a huge part of that, but it's kind of intriguing. I, I'm not sure how it would work out with size, but size has worked out at Tennessee to this point. Now, you said, and Travis agreed with you on the message board brought to you by TriStar Hats, the latest in TriStar. Go to the original hats, apparel, and more. TriStarHatsCo.com. TriStarHatsCo.com. Use the promo code HOOKED for 10% off. You can see it right there. Oh, right there. You can see the TriStar hat right there. It is awesome. They've got orange as well. So do you say the interior is the least important of Tennessee's offensive line? Because why, Caleb? Because the tackles have to be so good in pass protection and can't let Tennessee's quarterback get hit? Is that part of your reasoning? No, the interior has to be good because they have to – Josh Heupel's vertical rushing attack is so crucial. So they have to spurn the vertical rushing attack. That's how you get the big passing plays over the top. And it really just comes down to the guards and the centers doing their job. I think the tackles are kind of overrated in the system, if, I, if you really want me to be honest. Yes. So so are you saying all offensive linemen are overrated in the system? No, I said tackles are overrated in this system. And I'm going to stick with that, funny enough. But guards are not. Guards are not. Tackles are. Guards are not. Okay. Tennessee will have this many – all SEC offensive linemen following the season. I'll ask you that, and it's brought to you by Medicare Misty. 19 years this year. Well, I've been in the community since 1993. You're getting a lot of information. Unlike when you were working, you basically they made the choice for you. Now you have to make the choice. Come to us and let us help you make it easy. Call Medicare Misty, MedicareMisty.com or 423-777-5577. Let us help them sleep at night. And we call her Medicare Misty. Licensed in over 40 states, Medicare Misty, no charge to you, can help you with your Medicare needs. Please check her out and tell them Off the Hook Sports sent you. Support our sponsors. That's why we're here. Caleb, how many Tennessee offensive linemen will make all SEC postseason? For the record, only two players. Brew McCoy and Cooper Mays made the first two teams at preseason All-SEC Media Days. 
That was Cooper Mays and was it Squirrel or did they get through the nod with the injury? It was Squirrel White, right? Yeah, I think so. White, right? White, right? Yeah. Right, white. If it ain't white, you ain't right. Modern Family, it's a joke, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. Need that clip. Hey, by the way, I, I mentioned to Fred White one time. Uh, I said, hey, we could call your segment the White Way. And he uses all right, so okay, the wrong the way. You feel like there's a wrong way and a white way. <laughs> there's uh okay, Caleb. So the the offensive lineman um that could be all SEC players, candidates would be first possible all SEC offensive lineman. Cooper Mays, obviously. Give me your others. Oh, Javante Spragans, Lance Hurd, and John Campbell Jr. could all be all SEC. I don't need I don't know if they all will, but they all could be all SEC. Very easy. Hey now, hey now, hey now. I agree with all those. Now, which ones will be all SEC offensive line? Hmm. You mean you get mine first? Yeah, you go ahead and go. It'll be Cooper and Spragans. I don't think any of the other guys, because I think the tackles are too good in the SEC this year. So I'll add Spragans to the list. Um, the guy that would. Uh, ultimately change Tennessee's future the most would be Andre Keurig if he was all SEC, but I don't think that's going to happen. So, Caleb, are you willing to add Spragans? And would you add Hurd? Who else would you add? No, I had Spragans and Hurd. I had Spragans, Hurd, and Campbell. Okay. Well, no, the, the first question was you think could be. The second you think will be. So now you're in oh. prediction mode. Oh, okay. I'm going three. May, Spragans, and Campbell. Pretty strong. Spragans and Mays. Lance agrees with me. Uh, Lance says, I feel pretty optimistic about the offensive line this year. Happel has more depth. Hypel has more depth and talent this year to work with. I'll worry about the depth. That's the only thing I might disagree with you on there. That concerns me. 